Yo, it's Ross. So in today's video, guys, we are going to talk about the tomato varieties that I'm going to grow in this upcoming season, 2021. And I've done uh, videos, quite a few videos now on trialing different tomato varieties, talking about different tomato varieties, growing them. It They seem to always get a positive response. So I figure this year, not just for my own sake, but you know, from the video's sake, for the viewer's sake, uh, we're going to do more tomato varieties, more experimenting with that to then talk more about tomatoes. And I figure also there was a few varieties that really caught my eye, and I figure why not just try a bunch more um, to see really what the deal is and talk more about them. I, I really have been overwhelmed by one particular video where we, it was quite long actually, I think it was 28 minutes where we did a tomato tasting and people seem to be, uh, it was an overwhelmingly positive review. So I think obviously people like when I review figs because I offer a pretty unique, interesting perspective about them. I think a similar thing, maybe not in that sense, but si something similar is happening with tomatoes. So we're gonna talk more about them. We're gonna grow more of them and in this video, I figured I'd go over the varieties that I've decided to grow or uh, maybe not. I can't get them this year because maybe they don't have enough uh, seeds that are in stock or whatever it is, but we will try to grow them in the future. Um, so this is definitely, I think, also something high on my list that I'm very excited about and excited to talk to you guys about. So let's get into it. Um, as probably most of you know at this point, my favorite varieties of tomatoes are pretty simple and you can break them down by category. So in terms of a beef steak, which is above all else in my opinion, um, my favorite of those types is the pink brandy one. I don't think it's possible to beat it. I hope I can be proven wrong someday and that hopefully maybe one of these could potentially even beat it out. But so far I am in love with the richness, the sweetness, the fruity flavor. It's a little bit smoky, not too smoky, but it's got an interesting chalkiness, a very good earthiness to it. And above all else, I think the fl the texture, because you can't just talk about the flavor, you gotta talk about the texture. The texture is melt in your mouth, so, so good. And it's used for many different purposes. You can make a great sauce out of it. I've made a great sauce out of it. Um, you can eat it fresh, you can slice it. Uh, you can cook with it. I mean, you can do almost anything with it. So for me, that's number one above it. any other tomato. In terms of the paste tomatoes, in terms of making them uh, for sauce, I've made a lot of sauce over the years of different varieties. Not that many, actually. I'd love to experiment more with paste tomatoes. But going off of Amy Goldman's book, The Heirloom Tomato, I believe it's called, in that book, she really highly recommends the orange banana tomato. And I guess I should bring these guys up for you. The orange banana tomato. And I'm telling you, she says it in her book, and it's true. It just makes the best sauce. It just does. Like, I've never had a better sauce that uh, for my own tomatoes or from even like a store-bought tomato. My friends who, um, you know... My, one of my good friends, Dom, maybe you guys have, have heard a little bit a little bit about him on this channel. He makes the best amazing pizza. Really has careful, incredible ingredients with his pizza. He came over to the house one day. We made the pizza actually, brought it to a friend's, my other friend Chris, and we loved it, we enjoyed it. And Dom just could not stop remarking on the sauce. It was really a home run. I mean, I, I'm telling you, that... The sauce I make is so flavorful and it comes back to the tomato. It's not anything to do with me because I'm special in some way. It really is how you grow the tomato and the variety, the genetics of the tomato. So the orange banana for me is just king. And uh, until I find something better, it will always be king at least. Um, okay, so then there, we got the beefsteak, the paste tomato, and then now let's talk about the salad or the larger cherry tomato type tomatoes that you could say are, you know, for salads or for fresh eating or for people with large mouths that can put a <laughs> salad tomato in their mouth. For me, it's the green zebra. 
and you know I think personally the the green tomato uh, the green tomatoes are just completely underrated it, it really is and they are special especially if they're very acidic some of the green tomatoes are not of that acidic profile yeah it's green but you sh you will know how to you know you knew what you oh my god excuse me guys you will know when to pick it as it says here on Johnny's it'll develop a yellow blush so you don't want to pick an underripe and make the mistake but you will see the colors change if you are a careful observer as you should be when you're picking your fruits it's really critical to pick them at the, the most optimal time definitely the green zebras an easy one I think to identify but overall these green tomatoes, if they have that acidity to them, that's really in your face. I personally believe they're something that you just got to try. Like this tanginess is a good way to describe it. A tangy or zest salad tomato. It just doesn't have a whole lot of sweetness because it's really has a high acidity. So for me, I think not only does it fulfill a particular category of a salad type tomato, which I would argue is really good for fresh eating. Maybe not all the time. So the size of it fits it perfectly because you're not going to just eat salad tomatoes fresh all the time. But if you're going to put it on a sandwich, you're going to, uh, you know, use it on like a BLT, a burger, um, like a slicer, or you're going to even cook with it. It's going to be incredible for that particular purpose. And that's why you would use a tomato of this size. So for me, not only is it perfect in terms of flavor and it's one of the best tasting tomatoes that exists it also has the perfect size to go along with that particular flavor category um, so for me it's hard to beat again we're going to get into the the ones i'm trialing here in a minute now the best cherry tomato that i like to try is the black cherry and the black cherry hands down sets itself apart from any other tomato very simply because it has a different texture. Um, the texture is quite meaty. So a lot of these cherry tomatoes are really kind of bland in terms of their texture. Maybe they're, they have very thick walls to them. Maybe they even have a thick skin. The black cherry tomato is so easy and pleasant to eat. It's like eating a beefsteak, but in a much smaller size. Um, it is a larger, I would say a larger cherry tomato, very productive, extremely vigorous. I think it's a wonderful tomato that just doesn't stop. Um, and in addition, the flavor rivals some of the more complexly flavored beefsteak and let's say, you know, salad type tomatoes. So it, it has that, not only does it have the texture, but it also has the flavor of some of the really high tasting beefsteak tomatoes. So for me, it's extremely hard to beat. And I go out of my way to get these from the garden and eat these apart from any other cherry tomato. I know a lot of people love sun gold and I think there's a place for that because it's quite acidic. It's still very sweet and it just pops in your mouth and it's so bright. This is not necessarily that by any means, but for me, for this category, it's unbeatable. Um, so that's what we're up against. That's sort of the whole basis for trialing these new varieties. Finding something that's either very different and worth growing, um, or it's just a cut above what we already consider to be the best. And that's, I guess, another reason why I've stopped trialing tomatoes is that I found these four and to me, they just are superior to everything else I've tried. So why even try some other things, right? Uh, rather focus my attention in other in other directions. We are going to trial a lot of melon varieties this year as well. So stay tuned for that. We're going to do a video on that as well, if anyone's interested. But let's go on now to the varieties of tomatoes that we're going to try. This is the Ananas Noir or the Black Pineapple tomato. I've grown this in the past. However, I don't believe I ever fruited it. It just uh, had a lot of aphids one year. I basically, a couple of my tomatoes uh, in a prior year, I think about two years ago, I got them to a very large size before I transplanted them. Because they were so large, the aphids really attacked them and, and, uh, and 
and attacked the stressed plants basically they were just so stressed and i didn't go out of my way to you know hose off the tomato plants to get the aphids off i wanted the ladybugs to come in and i always do that no matter what it is i think it's a better practice however some of the tomato plants didn't make it and they didn't perform very well and they didn't fruit that year so this was one of them and it always obviously it looks very interesting obviously it has a really high reputation for flavor what i find to be interesting is that it's obviously very complex it says hearty tomato taste that's both sweet and rich and smoky and acidic so that means it's got everything uh, it should be very hard to beat and it might even I think it has the potential for taking the top spot of pink brandy wine. I think if there's a decent shot, I should try it. So for me, that's that's uh, definitely a top choice there, I think, for trialing. Another one here is the rose tomato, and this one is basically pink brandy wine. Um, across the board, no matter who you look at, no matter who you ask, it seems like a lot of people refer to this tomato as a rival to pink brandy wine. So we're going to find out. I think this one could be a slightly more productive version of pink brandy wine. I do find that my pink brandy wines are not necessarily the most productive tomato, obviously, but they're better than what people, I think, give them credit for. I do uh, get actually two, maybe even three crops of pink brandy wine um, throughout the length of the season, and they go all the way till frost, which... I think a lot of people struggle with you got to grow them vertical uh, you got to give them a little bit more sun a little bit more space because they are a shorter plant that's not very vigorous but if you do that I think you have good success with them this roast tomato should be more vigorous and therefore also more productive so we will see if indeed this actually does be it I think it's a worthwhile trial another one here is called Paul Robeson and We've tried black crim, uh, really my first year of growing some of these more heirloom amazing type tomatoes. We tried black crim, pink brandy wine, and black Cherokee. Is it purple Cherokee or black Cherokee? I'm not sure, but uh, the three of those together, side by side, and the pink brandy wine always won for me. However, even since I've tried black crim a number of times, and black crim just doesn't do it for me like the pink brandy wine. Yeah, it's great, but when I have a pink brandy wine, I'd rather eat that. Um, so the Paul Robeson, similar to the Cherokee Purple, to the Black Creme, but maybe it'll wow me um, like the Cherokee Purple, like the Black Creme, but enough to maybe make it slightly ahead of a pink brandy wine. I don't know. A lot of people love this tomato. There's a lot of these types, these purple black type tomatoes that people rave about and there's so many names and there's so many origins and maybe a lot of them are even the same uh it's kind of crazy how they all are very similar oddly enough so for me uh there must be one among these that's going to be the best and therefore we're going to stick with that and see if we can find something again that's better than the brandy wine um now we are going to also grow the Cherokee Purple. So according to my my garden plants here, we haven't adjusted this just yet. But the Cherokee Purple, for all extensive purposes, is going to be that indicator of not only should it compete against the pink brandywine, but also the indicator for all of the other black or purple tomatoes like the Paul Robeson. Um, the next one here is Black Opal, and I actually thought that maybe I should grow Haley's Purple Comet, but I can't find seeds of this. I think maybe in the future I might try it, but uh, the Black Opal, according to this Totally Tomato website, it says possibly one of the best black fruited varieties in the market, bred from the popular heirloom black cherry and selected specifically for its improved growth habit, firmer texture, and superior flavor. Uh, so for me that's interesting and we'll f we'll really find out i i seriously doubt anything can beat it but if it's bred from black cherry it has a higher chance obviously so we'll see if the texture firmer texture doesn't sound better to me better flavor sounds better to me 
but who knows? Uh, they may have totally ruined it. Maybe someone has a totally different opinion than me on that particular variety, and uh, it just may not be anywhere near what I'm thinking it's going to be. But to try to find something, again, that's going to beat the Black Cherry, why not? Um, another interesting one here that I found from uh, Roots and Refuge Farm on YouTube, uh, she was talking about in her little top tomato taste, top varieties of tomatoes that she grows. One of them that really stuck out to me was this one here, the terracotta, um, what is it, the uh, Thorburn's terracotta tomato. And you could tell by looking at it, it definitely has an interesting look and should have an interesting flavor because of that look. This to me is mind blowing right there. That should be enough, I think, for anybody to try it um given enough space and time so we're gonna try this one i think i've never had great luck with orange tomatoes other than the orange banana it's weird that an orange banana an orange tomato makes the great sauce as amy Gold goldman has said um but this one here who knows it's got some greenish in it so it's probably not your typical boring green yellow tomato that uh a lot of people for whatever reason go crazy for um, so we'll see it definitely looks very interesting again in competition for that top brandywine spot maybe you know this one and the black pineapple could bring something different and unique that makes me want to grow uh, grow those as well alongside the the pink brandywine you never know um, I've heard a lot of good reviews on this especially from Roots and Refuge who made a good argument about this, how it was in, I think she said it was in her salsa or something that she made and she mixed in different types of tomatoes and she always knew when she took a bite of this tomato because it was incredibly rich. So I love rich tomatoes and that umami flavor is really what I think to me is the most important. This one also was recommended by Roots and Refuge as the Napa Chardonnay from Brad Gates at Wild Boar Farms. Uh, his review was enough to to make me want to grow it uh, or at least his description very productive yellow cherry with uh, I don't even know how to say that word so we're gonna skip it <laughs> great looking with a very good flavor that is sweet rich everyone who's trialed it was pleased another variety that has exceptional hang uh, hang time on the vine quality and can be harvested by cutting the entire clusters off that's always a plus um, especially here in this rainy environment anything that can really fight the mold and this humid climate that I'm in is definitely a plus making for a very pretty and unique look early and does well in cool and hot conditions um, really I think what got me was this here a very good flavor that is sweet rich so love the sweeter type of tomatoes with some acidity a good balance obviously um, that are also very rich. So this one could be something very interesting that sets it apart from the black cherry and could make it uh, make a run for its money. This one here I found on Johnny's. Can't get it. They're only selling right now to commercial farmers because of COVID. They seem to be pretty busy and I don't blame them. It just stinks that you can't find this. And also it's so expensive. Look how much one packet of seeds is. That's ridiculous 15 seeds for $21 but as they say I mean it seems to be worth it because look at this Marnero keeps the best attributes of black tomatoes and improves upon the disease resistance and yield flesh is very soft excellent flavor and texture a dead ringer for Cherokee purple so for me that's like they just took Cherokee purple and improved it why would you not grow it because it's a hybrid and you can't save seeds yeah that does suck but if it is indeed slightly better than cherokee purple it seems to me like it's worth trialing at the bare minimum um so yeah i think that's a really interesting uh breeding that they did whoever did this and to me it seems well worth growing so we're gonna try it at some point but you can't i can't find the seeds so it's unfortunate but is what it is same thing with Abigail it just basically is another replacement for pink brandywine improving uh, fruit quality and disease tolerance 
uh, delivers significantly higher yields, marketable fruit with greatly reduced cracking and stem scarring. So those are pretty significant. It says here, significant improvement over true heirlooms, early maturity, another plus, late blight resistance, balanced plant provide even more benefits to growers, lovely uniform proportions at manageable, manageable size between damsel and brandywine. Rib shoulders, meaty texture, rich flavor, evoke our favorite pink heirloom. So essentially what they're saying is that this is a pink brandy wine replacement that they've bred and should have a similar, if not the same flavor. I would be quite disappointed if it didn't have the same flavor. So if uh, we unfortunately lost some flavor to gain the other benefits, I don't know if I'd be so happy or so high on this particular variety, but still nonetheless, interesting is it not this is one i also found on johnny's and then they kind of directed me here because there's a company a farm they i guess they call themselves artisan seeds who cater to johnny's and work with uh, johnny's they breed their own tomato varieties and they also sell different varieties on their website because i couldn't find them on johnny's we can find them somewhere else so that's always a nice plus right there to have multiple sources of these things and these kind of weird times that we're in the green bee to me seems like a no-brainer i saw this on johnny's i immediately was interested just the photo of it got me it says here green bee is a uniquely uh a unique hybrid cherry tomato that never softens strange although these crunchy cherry tomatoes never soften they certainly do ripen and when the flavor is sweet and tangy with hints of plum when ripe, slight hints of yellow and or pink are visible on the fruits. The texture and flavor combination in this variety are brand new and will inspire many growers, many uh, new uses by chefs and gardeners alike. We uh, bred green bee uh, bee on our farm. It's a vigorous, indeterminate variety with above average disease resistance in the face of uh, all the diseases listed there. So. Uh, for me, I think it's above and beyond. I mean, look, here's some of the things that they did with it in their cooking. Um, it just looks incredible, this tomato. It kind of reminds me what I was trying to find years ago when I tried the Green Doctor's tomato, which I thought was going to be a cherry tomato with a similar flavor to Green Zebra. Uh, that I would be able to eat more and potentially even replace green zebra because I, I don't particularly like the salad type tomatoes for their size. You can obviously use them as a slicer and that's really important. Um, whereas a cherry tomato, it's you can't use it as a slicer. But certainly if I wanted to pop something in my mouth that was far superior to sun gold and have that bright acidic flavor to it, I thought Green Doctors would be that tomato, and it just wasn't. It wasn't very good at all. Um, there was a couple other green cherry tomatoes I looked at and tried, and didn't seem like anything really, you know, seemed like it, it really got my attention. This one has definitely got the tanginess to it. Hints of plum. Uh, it's also kind of sweet, I imagine. So for me, very interesting. Also could be very interesting in the kitchen. I think this one's probably going to make the cut already. I don't even, I sort of have very little doubts about this one. The next one here is called Karma Miracle. And this one's bred by Karen Olivier, True North Tomatoes. You can find her on Facebook apparently. I think she's in Canada and she's breeding tomatoes for northern climates. This one really stood out to me by a couple uh, descriptions especially this one here it says it's a vigorous and productive potato leaf variety producing ripe fruits approximately 75 days after transplant fruits are green with pink marbling and the flavor is exceptional flavor is exceptional guys there it is that's enough for me i mean look at it uh, it looks incredible and they them saying the flavor is exceptional that's enough for me so other varieties here that we've considered growing and, and will consider growing is the Sweet Tooth and the Bear's Tooth from Brad Gates at Wild Boar Farms. These are both tomatoes that we looked at. Sweet Tooth tomato seeds. This is a variety like the, like the both of them 
that are dark purple tomatoes that are paste tomatoes. So this was interesting to me because I hadn't find a purple paste tomato before that I've tried and considered growing. As we know, the color really largely determines the flavor. I like the orange ones. They're quite fruity and they give a fruitiness to the sauce. Um, these dark purple tomatoes should make a very interesting sauce. And as Brad Gates mentions on both of them, Sweet Tooth and Bear's Tooth, which I can't actually find the seeds of, believe it or not, it should have the potential to make an amazingly rich sauce, as, uh, as Brad says. So those are really interesting right there, without a doubt, for maybe even having a different sauce or maybe even replacing the orange banana. I also thought about the trying the uh oh man what's that paste tomato the amish paste tomato obviously has great reviews everybody loves it i tried alpaca one year didn't like it uh not necessarily for the flavor but didn't like how it performed i tried a, another friend's paste tomato that was good didn't like how it really performed um actually it is quite an incredible tomato believe it or not I just find this orange banana is out of this world. So um, it's got, they got tough competition, I'll tell you that. The other ones we're gonna try is Blonde Kopchkin, which we've done a review on in the past. It's also called Eatly. In my opinion, it's similar to Sun Gold or similar enough that you shouldn't probably grow both. The Eatly or the Blonde Kopchkin produces an insane amount of tomatoes. I mean, the clusters of tomatoes are crazy. Uh, for that reason, I think it's totally worth showcasing that one again and and, uh, and trialing that one again. The other one that we're trialing here is Solar Flare, and I sort of regret even getting this one. I think, in all honesty, the Solar Flare tomato just doesn't. I had high, higher hopes for it, but it something about it is now giving me the, you know, the what is it? Uh, like buyer's remorse, essentially. Um, it's a beefsteak, red with gold stripes, very meaty, luscious, sweet red tomato flavor. Uh, I like the meatiness of it, if that's true. Luscious, sweet red tomato flavor. That, to me, is a little worrisome. Um, it says it was selected for flavor, wow factor, production, increased earliness, but I don't know if that's enough for me. So I think... We're still going to grow it. We're still going to trial it, but I'm sort of a little bit less on that, you know, high right now about this variety for whatever reason. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. He says it's one of his workhorses, so that's always good. And at worst case scenario, I get a ton of tomatoes. So whatever, right? But I guess it's an interesting red that we'll try and grow and see what the deal is with that. Some of the varieties I think I got rid of was decided not to grow was Black Beauty. We're definitely not going to grow that. Um, after kind of reviewing the video that I did on these tomatoes a couple years ago and seeing the Black Beauty in it, I didn't really have the greatest view on it. It doesn't seem like my tomato. It's more about the color and the beautiness of it than it is about the flavor. And we're all about the flavor. So if it's gorgeous, that's only a nice plus. Um, I did like the earthiness of the Black Beauty. It really was like eating fennel while eating a tomato, but I could just grab a fennel leaf, a little bit of fennel, even some seeds or something, and eat it with the tomato and have that similar earthy herbal flavor to it, um, you know, with any other tomato. So and you could do the same thing, obviously, with basil or rosemary or whatever it is you want to eat. Um, yeah, so for me, it's just it's slower on the list and, and maybe I'll grow it just to have it in the trial and just say we grew it again because it's an interesting tomato, but yeah, not as high on it. And I think we got a lot to choose from here, a lot to trial, see what the deal is. I'm still considering other options, but I think I'm sort of now done. I would be pretty surprised unless some of you came out and really said, Ross, this is a really amazing tomato. You should definitely grow it um, for a pretty good reason. So if you have a tomato like that, please comment down below. 
I am interested to know what everybody's going to grow in terms of their tomatoes. So let me know down in the comments as well. And we will see you guys for the next video. Um, and we're going to be seeding these. We'll do a video on that. We're going to talk about planting them, how we're going to grow them, and then their reviews throughout the year. So stay tuned for all of that. We're probably a little bit away from any more tomato updates, but we'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Take care, guys.